So before I uh, show some excerpts of my work, uh, I would like to try out something with you. It's very simple. Tick. The border is not where something begins, but the border is where the entity of something begins. That was my first song. zwischen den Sachen sollen. Mitten in einer Sache stehen. Und weil wir aus
have shit in my eyes. I have shit in my heart. Got runs out. Laughs. Shines. Intoxiates the sky. The sky is singing at the top of its voice. singing, the flesh is singing, the glory of the sun is singing, the eyes are dry, the torrent silence of shit in my heart. Sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Mit sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Mit sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Er min verdens grænser. Mit sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Mit sprogs grænser, mit sprogs grænser, er mit sprogs grænser, mit sprogs sprogs verdens er mit sprogs verdens er mit verdens grænser. Wenn ich ein Vöglein wär und auch zwei Flügel hätt, flög ich ach wohin? Vielleicht könnt ich ein anderer sein. Doch der andere ist der, der ich bin. Ich bin die Kaufkraft in Person. Ich bin das blinde Tier des Kapitalismus. Statt Augen implantierte Multioption. Halleluja. Halleluja! In meinem Hirn spukt ein Gedanke, eine Idee. Sie 
besteht aus drei Teilern. Sex, Reichtum und ich AG. Halleluja, Halleluja. Ja, 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 ja. Ja, 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 ja. Ja, 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 ja. Ein Eisbär wär im kalten Polar, müsste ich nicht mehr schreien. Das stumme Tier im Stall der Politik. Ich bin das ökonomische Systemmodul. Sissy Foss im Paradies. Der Stein ist ein Apfel, der Apfel ein iPod. Aus Taiwan. Der Stein ist ein Apfel, der Apfel ein iPod aus Taiwan. Wie 
obszön. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht das. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht das täglich. Wie obszön. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht das. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht das täglich. Wie obszön in dieser Nacht das täglich. Ich. Ludwig Wittgenstein saß. Mit sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Mit sprogs grænser er min verdens grænser. Wandels, in denen wir leben, den Halt, den die Menschen brauchen. Hi, 
Heimat? Heimat? Gibt es gerade in Zeiten des sehr schnellen Wandels, in denen wir leben, den Halt, den die Menschen brauchen? Eigentlich geht es für die Menschen heute darum zu begreifen, dass wir äh, das Heimatgefühl äh, neu formatieren müssen. Eigentlich geht es für die Menschen heute darum zu begreifen, dass wir äh, das Heimatgefühl äh, neu formatieren müssen. Ich freue mich darüber, dass es gelungen ist, den Laden zu, zu töten. Oh my god. Oh, it's so fucking hot. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, 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 god yeah. Oh, 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 Große Freude bei den Amerikanern und ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, große Freude für die gesamte westliche Welt. I dag en historisk dag, Osama Bin Ladens død, er en markant og skilsættende begivenhed i den globale kamp mod terror. Große Freude bei den Amerikanern und ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Und ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch sagen, die große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Ich glaube, man kann auch Ein Minarett, ein sicheres Zeichen über die Unklarheit, ein sicheres Zeichen über den Westen, ein sicheres Zeichen über das christliche Abendland, ein sicheres Zeichen gegenüber der Demokratie, ein sicheres Zeichen gegenüber der Freiheit. Große Freude bei den Amerikanern. Die Gefahr des Terrorismus ist noch lange. Große, große Freude, Freude der gesamten Welt. Der Kampf gegen den Terrorismus ist noch weiter gegen uns, zu töten.
on Where something ends The border is where the entity of something begins Wiederholt sich nicht, bis sie aber nicht vollendet. Wiederholt sie sich durchaus. Exactly. That's why I also brought this very old thing with a, the tape because for me it's very important to connect <laughs> my body as a performer because I'm not a, mu a musician, mm -hmm. a performer, and it's it's always uh, uh, the movement, the action on stage. It's not about music because if you would, would burn it on a CD, it would be really boring. So um, uh, and this one shows it was a part of. Uh, my thinking about this evening to show some different aspects mm. of this work, and it's it's very clear that uh, the sound is connected to the body. I'm eating the tape or not or whatever, uh, but it shows the principle of work, and it doesn't matter whether it's a digital uh, MIDI system. Mm -hmm. It's just that maybe it's, it's something like a keyboard, which is uh, uh, salit, uh, split it, yeah, defragmented, defragmented, and. Uh, the, the space is then important and my way how to deal with it. And in the, in the best case, it's always that I'm determined by, by the space and I have to run and, and I'm not just subject and sovereign with the stuff, but also uh, I'm getting lost sometimes if I'm doing more complex things. That, that's for me a very uh, nice thing if I really get lost. <laughs> maybe make a comment rather than a question. I just have to say, the sort of the yeah and air eh and running back and forth, that is one of the most interesting actions I've seen in like the past three years or something. I was just like, oh, what, what you <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, but it's, uh, the, you, you know uh, which voice it was? Uh, maybe uh, it was used before. So did a, a performance? Yes, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. 
over a few hours, I think. I don't, I'm not so sure. But together with Yes, they, he invited people to, to do it with him. Uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a reminiscence. It's not important for the show at all. It's not about uh, <coughs> name dropping, but it's for me, it's a, a funny aspect for myself and because you, it's important for me, so uh, I use fragments, quote them. Quotation has always been important for you. And this is actually, I think this is the fourth time or something in the last 10 years you have been in Copenhagen. Yeah, performing at least. Um, and some of the earlier shows, the quotation were quite more more significant, significant, which were very present that you were quoting all the time, especially in in Mature the Beatles ten years ago. It was yeah. quote on quote on quote on quote. So that's an important part of the process, or has been. Has that become less an, an issue? Uh, is that, or it's just something in the behind before it was more something you. you it was really important for you all the time to quote. Yeah, it's not necessary anymore because it's, it, uh, or I recognize that uh, always quoting and saying, ah, oh, it's this is from this, this is from that. It's not necessary. It has to, to have its own quality on stage or in the performance and not, uh, yeah, it's important because it's a quote of uh, a philosopher or something. Okay, I'm dealing with Heidegger or something like that because uh, especially in Germany, Heidegger is uh, what, just a fascist. And, but he but he says some important thi things. That's why I translated mm -hmm. also the take back uh, into essay. It's about interest, uh, and um, so I I have I like it so much. If I like it so much, I I also say it's from uh, Wittgenstein or Heidegger or whatever because I'm I'm in that stuff because I'm eating that stuff like uh, my strategy of Einverleibung. It's, it's hard to say. I'm not working conceptual uh, at all. I'm, I really try to, to find texts or things which are, which touch me. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a very strategy of work like anthropophagia or something. It's not like that, but uh, it's a little bit this way of catching things and, and through the body and, and to, to throw them away. <laughs> throw them away. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just a strategy. It's not so important for in the end what for what you see. But if we talk also about our strategies, and but I th but I mean for me it is it's incredibly important yes, what what is the end. But again because it I mean it's because it may be hidden, it may be behind. But again for me this is a massive difference between what you do. And what I see other people maybe doing slightly similar work doing, for you it is so serious. And it's yeah. not just sort of postmodern <laughs> quoting or postmodern superficiality. There is this incredibly complex, deep, and very serious stuff behind the work. But also at the same time, this, you know, I mean, I was just like almost laughing, grinning for like sort of 30 minutes throughout that because it's so bloody enjoyable. And it's like if you can make an enjoyable, fun performance out of your deep interest in bloody Heidegger. This is like yeah, a, it's it's right. a, <laughs> is, is, is such a unique and unusual thing to see, rather than a superficial quotation of Heidegger. It's like yeah. it is something serious to you, but you yeah. turn it into this great, wonderfully energetic and fun um, performance. talked about you coming here, we also talked about if it should have a topic or, or not at all, a team or mm -hmm. something, uh, which you normally do have some, type, some kind of topic or something. You also call this the border, but it's very open. Yeah. Normally you are more strict in trying to put in a team or this is about this or that. Yeah. Uh, but we, or you mostly, of course, decided to go against that. And I agreed on that because, of course, we like to see working demonstration here. This was much more than a working demonstration. But but this to see you, to feel how you deal with your material, how you put that material and transform that into something else, is for me so much important than that or that topic. That is the essence of your work for me, really. So 
So, yeah, as Chris said, it's 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 really well done. And it's yeah. I have to say because uh, but, I, but uh, I yeah I didn't I didn't come to my point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when you also when you started to sing, you said what you wanted to do was kind of similar to the aboriginals. Uh, they're, they're kind of singing in the territories. Mm. Um, okay. So maybe, yeah. maybe you should say a bit about that because, as I understood it back then, t they they kind of sing the territories, uh, and you do that in the same way that kind of you say this is my territory within these borders of mm -hmm. Heidegger and Wittgenstein, etc. Um, it was an association because I read this book of Bruce Chatlin uh, in German. It's called Town. And so he wrote about this, uh, they are uh, creating their territor physical territories through singing. And I never understood what it means or something. But uh, sometimes it's in art, like often, in my case, it's often the case that uh, it's a productive, sh a productive unsharpness. It's just an, an idea that you can sing your territories. And then I ask myself, What's my territory or what are my territories? So it's um, very often text or, um, yeah, text material, for example. Um, and this territory, I, I shouldn't try to understand them in reading and uh, going through the head, but I try to understand them in singing. That's my territory, uh, territory of thinking. Uh, to sing it, to understand it. It's just theory, it's just a, basis for uh, how, how to work. And then I uh, read, uh, for example, this uh, military defense uh, yearbook of the German defense, uh, Verteidigungsministerium, defense ministry. And um, they talked about these borders and how they should defend the strategies. And, and I didn't understand it, so I sang it in the performance, the text. And it was really funny because then it suddenly starts to, the words started to uh, collapse somehow, all the theories in that case. In another case, it's something else. But my dream is al always to have these territories which have to be sung. But um, on the other side, I, as I began to work with these concert performances, I uh, had fun to, to create songs. And songs is the totally opposite territories which have to be sung because territories are really uh, this monumental text material or whatever and songs are very simple very like this song for song teletechnic it's, it's just a 10 words and that's it and uh, I have sometimes I have conflicts between uh, this song structure of saying something in three minutes and this idea of territories which have to be sung. Yep. That's my conflict. Yep. Yeah. Anyone more? You also have time to maybe bring in something yeah, to us. Or really? Yeah, sure. Actually, it's uh, strange, but the, the atmosphere and all the, the different voices that come together in your, uh, in your performance when you just see it and, and don't even think about the, where the quotes come from, is that for you like a, um, a symptom of, uh, of, of um, or a, a your kind of worldview today? Uh, you know, the atmosphere that you create, which seems quite, um, well, to me, it does seem like this postmodern with lots of voices and things happen s simultaneously and um, a little bit apocalyptic for the over networked brain or something. Um, that's that's the atmosphere I get. Is that is that how you experience the world a bit, or is it does it not relate to your um, idea of, of what it is to be a subject today in kind of modern influenced society? Uh, I I don't know whether I got the question at all, but um, it's it for me it's very uh, clear that I I work like that. I'm uh, working very baroque because. My problem is I always have these media influences, things are going on, uh, as I did it in the last uh, song with, with Angela Merkel and Sprache and so on. 
And uh, this overkill of information, I'm, I'm a very conservative uh, a guy. I would like to have uh, some serious small information and not every day the, the full pack or something. And I'm a little bit uh, uh, over with, with all that stuff, of course. Uh, and my own, the, the only strategy to, to go against that is not to, to, uh, to go uh, outside into the nature, but to, to eat it, to, to get it in <laughs> and to ausdrücken, uh, exorzieren. Um, it's a kind of exorcism. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my way to, to deal with it. To say, okay, if you give me this, all this stuff like Strache, I'm living in Vienna since four years, and Strache is an ultra radical uh, FPÖ leader, but it's a, not a, it's a legal party in, in Austria, and every day you see his, his shit writing on the uh, yeah. carpet. Uh, like uh, uh, home for the Austrians and uh, Vienna blood. Uh, we don't want to uh, to have other blood in, 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 in Vienna and all this shit. And I have to read it every day. And that's why I'm so angry about that. And to say that the minaret is the symbol of uh, losing all the freedom, uh, everything, and we please. And so I, I take it also and <laughs> go back with it. And so it's, of course, my experience, daily experience. And it's not, for me, then it starts to be really complex because it's somehow there's a big discussion about political art or art and politics and blah, blah, blah. And I'm always saying um, the strategy behind that is art is art, otherwise it's shit. It's not political <coughs> art, it's in politics, it's nothing. But it's just art. And that's the only freedom we have as artists is to say, it's art, nothing else. I'm not, um, yeah, I'm, uh, no, ah. Um, dependent. Dependent on, on other things. And that's why, of course, some political aspects are then important, but it's not political art. It's art as the free space we have as artists is, allows us to, or for me, allows me to, to eat and reenact and whatever <laughs> what else of the other artists do. Mm -hmm. And there I'm, I'm very strong to say art is art, nothing else. But does it answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Art is art or it's shit? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was Camilo it was, uh, Portinari who said it. Uh, in the 70s, I think, it was Eduardo Galliano uh, had, had this quote of uh, this young, very engaged uh, student who said, um, can you, uh, went to, to Candido Portinari, who, who was really politically very engaged, and was why he had to, to leave, and then they, they asked him, what do you think about social, <laughs> um, socialistic real, realism? Hmm. Yeah, as an art form. What do you think about so socialist uh, um, um, realism? And then he thought and thought and thought, and at the end he said, art is art, otherwise it's shit. That was his comment. And that's a little bit the, the idea of behind. It's not about social realism or uh, art as, I don't know. Transformer of society or political. Yes. Uh, you don't believe in that. I don't believe. I believe in, in, a, in, a, in a political engagement, but not as an art. Because then, also as an artist, I, I would have been, I, I, I should be politically correct. And that's not, uh, as an artist, I, I don't need the feeling to be politically correct. Really? Yeah, <laughs> as an artist.
Yeah, in, in that sense that, that it's not, I, I don't have to think whether I'm political or a step further politically correct or incorrect or something else. I have to deal seriously with my problems. And the strategy, for example, could also be a strategy of affirmation. Like, it's, it's a really hard thing. I have, I'm very critical in that, but for example, Anselm Kiefer did this uh, an, a Nazi uh, uh, cruise. Uh, how is it called? I don't know. Salute. Uh, this salute. Yeah. Anselm Kiefer uh, went to hmm? this highly this highly yeah. Hitler thing uh, as an image. He he went to to different uh, monuments, German old fascist monuments, and also. Uh, at, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm monuments, and there he did this very plakative, mm -hmm. of course, but this uh, uh, Hitler ring, high Hitler ring. And, it's, and he did it so strong and so often that there was a theory uh, about he did it as long as he breaks down itself. It's getting absurd. Uh, so, the, uh, and uh, uh, Basenbrock called it the strategy of affirmation, and then uh, another guy call it the strategy of ambivalence because of course just people who who are themselves critical can read it as a joke so it's it's a very tricky thing but i have to say i'm a little bit in this direction uh, kind of this ambivalent uh, strategy Similar discussion in English about political art is just for people who's already convinced in that or that direction. So it doesn't change anything at all. It's just for the people who are really is that called kind of similarity? Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. Well, maybe this is also for Arif. I'm interested to have it because in my experience, the definition of political radicality in art usually gets determined by someone outside the artist. So for example, like if I do something because I want to do it, because I believe in it, because I have this idea, because it's a gesture, whatever, yeah. like I might have my own political views or whatever, but it, the, whether that gets like, whether somebody calls the cops on it or whatever happens in the outside, the way that it gets interpreted, that, that, that notion of like that's political or that's radical or whatever is usually I find imposed by some someone outside, and I don't know. I mean, do you? Th I mean, obviously, I, well, I don't know. It's not personally. I do think of my art, and I, I think of like politics within my artwork and stuff like that. But I don't know. Do you think about that, or do you like? Do you find that thing of like that? It just it sort of gets dis defined externally as political or radical, or maybe even in ways that you never even imagined. somebody else doesn't. Mm. I think everything we do is important. Mm -hmm. And everything we do changes the world. And it, even if, you know, when the, you know, when in the US when we made abstract expressionism as a response to Second World War, you know, that that's, that's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I think whatever we do, it can be transformative. And the rest is just words. That was so lovely to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone expressing that there is actually a transformative power in art, and you can call it power, you can call it whatever you want. But like just the fact that, that yeah, you are doing stuff. And Everything we do, I mean, the smallest, mm. I really believe in that. The smallest thing we do, being here tonight, what we yes. saw, what mm. when a child makes us, it, everything mm. is, is, is transformative, the same as other things that we stuck with, you know, it's, it really matters what we do. And I think whether you call it political, it really doesn't matters. really matter. No. Mm. It's more if you can, uh, well, at least in the experience. It's really about how to, uh, you talked about a little bit about the process, how to make it better for yourself, how to make what you do better, mm. whatever that means to you. Mm. you know? um, the rest kind of, I think, has a big impact.
I think in, in, in that case, it's, for me, it's important to say that, that there is a difference between, uh, if, if you as an artist, you, you, you address people uh, in a sense of, um, of um, there, there are different ways. And uh, I think there's mm -hmm. this one way of just giving an angebot, an offer, doing this stuff and it's, it's, it's an offer. It's not like um, addressing people in that sense that I, I'm showing you now uh, how it is because I, I see a lot of that, that stuff. But to say I'm working with that and that and it's an offer for you to step in or not, that's, yeah. that's a really for me a, a very important. Uh, yeah, I think you, you talked about sort of Schrodinger, who died, you know, um, where he, he did this bust in Vienna with all the refugees, our big brother, and yeah. every time, yeah. and people said that what he did was what they called over-identification, -identi he overly identified with the right, yeah. and they became over, and, and, and you could argue that, okay, he crossed to the other side in a way, by, by kind of really pushing that point of, you know, trying to be highlighting something, but being seduced by it, in a way, and... Um, or there's what another strategy where um, you know what it's been called sort of an antagonistic aesthetic. So people try to talk about power relations. So um, oh, I can't remember exactly when in in, in Venice Biennial when he, he paid uh, black workers to bleach their hair. Or something like that, yeah, um, kind of highlighting that. So yeah, I think the. There are many strategies, and I think, yeah, we can to talk about it. We have to be specific about mm. what we're talking about and what works and um, works doing different things. But, and yeah, in some works, it feels much more like they tell you what to think. And I think sometimes when there's no space, there's no silence or space for the audience at all, it's just um, you feel like you've been told something. Maybe it works. Less than if you have a bit, you feel as a viewer that you have more space in the work to kind of maneuver yourself. Thank you. I think I'll cut here. I hope Arif and Otmar will be here for the rest of the evening, hopefully, and you can go <laughs> talk with them. Um, Are we going right now? now or <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, we have preferred soup, it's a vegetarian soup with <coughs> mostly onion and spelt. Mm. Um, and we have wine in the bar. I can recommend the white wine for this course. It's very good together. So for yeah. I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, then we'll continue with Camila. Uh, mm. But until then, uh, enjoy yourself and 